Welcome back, everybody, to the 2022 Freestyle Disc Indie. Let me take that back one sec. The 2022 IFTC Indie Freestyle Disc Championships. We are so excited to be here. I'm Daniel O'Neill, live streaming from New York City with my one of my best friends, James Wiseman. James, what's going on, dude? What's up, Daniel? After an amazing junior indie freestyle disc championship, we're really excited today to bring you the challenger division. These are going to be older players, not quite pros, but people who are looking to make the pro division in the future. And I think we're going to see a higher level of play. And I'm really excited for that. Yeah, this is going to be an epic day of freestyle. We have 16 amazing athletes coming to us live from around the world truly around the world. Um, it is so exciting to see freestyle continuing to grow um, and events like this really bring us together. So want to first and foremost, shout out the play we saw yesterday. Um, the junior division was incredible to watch. There was so much style, uh, difficulty. I, I mean, across the board, I was super impressed with just about everybody we saw play. Uh, what stood out to you? I think seeing the personality in the style, like you said, a lot of times when you're dealing with players who are less experienced, it's just about executing the moves on a technical level. But yesterday we saw all these juniors who are getting so much better at playing that they are able to reveal their personalities, their styles. They're really expressing themselves as an art rather than just trying to do the mechanics of a move. And it makes freestyle so much more joyous to watch. And it's really incredible to see the juniors make that kind of leap so quickly. Yeah, I agree. Um, so with that, you know, today we switch our focus. This is the challenger division. It's open to anybody. Um, I'll quickly go over the rules and kind of what we're going to do today. So this is 1v1 battles. And from the first round today, we have 16 competitors. We have a little more time. It'll be best two out of three. So head on over to ifdc.tv. You can fill out your own battle pass and make your predictions at home. But we're going to run through these first round battles straight down the list. So Tim Rohrer versus Tetsuo Noguchi. Uh, that's Switzerland versus Japan. Wow, I am so excited. It is literally after midnight in Japan uh, where Tetsuo is logging in from. What a warrior. Uh, to be here with us. Then we'll choose, uh, turn to Anna Fusari, a new player from Italy who I can't wait to watch, versus Andres Figuora from Cuba. Then we have Karsik Shai, all the way from Hong Kong, going up against Natalia Agadello from Medellin, Colombia. Excuse me, Girardota, right outside of Medellin. Laurent Isler from France versus Jamiu Salawu from Abuja, Nigeria. Then Timo Zimmerman from Switzerland versus Angie Vargas from Bogota, Colombia. Uh, Michael James from Abuja, Nigeria versus the USA's own Preston Smith. Uh, really excited to see Preston uh, in possibly his first freestyle competition. I'm not sure. Um, unfortunately, I have to give a huge shout out, uh, but bittersweetly to Mohamed Dreza Nikruz who is from Iran and has been training for this event. And wow, uh, the Iranian team, and in particular, Mohamed Reza, are getting so good so fast due to internet issues in his country. Uh, after a lot of trying, he's unable to join today. So we're super bummed. Um, but Mohamed Reza, just want to say, we respect your game. So excited to hopefully get you back here in the next competition. Uh, if you guys want, connect with him on Instagram. It's Mohamed Reza underscore Nikruz. Um, but, you know, check out Iranian Freestyle. Um, and he's really kind of leading the way on that. Um, but in his place, we have another Nigerian superstar who could have played yesterday in the junior division. His name's Peter Denon. Um, he's a young player, maybe 10, 12 years old, but shredding. So he's going to take that place. Um, and play Mikey Thompson from Chile, Venezuelan, but living in Chile. And then in our last first round matchup, we have Stasiek Sapierzynski from Poland 
versus Walter Dunbar, which is an epic comeback story from the USA. Hasn't played in 25 years, but was a junior freestyle Frisbee player in the 1990s. Uh, amazing story there. Cool. So any questions, James? Well, shout out to Ryan, who me and him have been making a podcast and we made some predictions on who would win the challenger division. And I had as a dark horse, Laurent Eastler. And I'm surprised to see that in his first matchup, he only has 43% of the vote from Battle Pass members. So maybe it's a small sample size. So if you haven't logged into ifdc.tv, log in, make pick your winners. And, you know, I'm just saying, I might be an expert. I think Laurent has a little bit more of a chance than people are giving him. So there might be some good value there to collect some battle pass points that people aren't are taking. Now, there's another thing that you forgot to mention about the battle pass, which is I believe we have a prize to whoever collects the most battle pass points Ooh. by picking the most correct winners today. Do you know what that prize is, Daniel? I do not. I would be very interested to learn. But just to clarify, this is only for today's challenge. It's not a it's not. So anybody logging in for the first time today, I still have a chance to get in on this and win this prize. Exactly. But you better log in right now. OK, okay. once the in. battle starts, you are no longer able to vote on that battle, which means you are giving up potential battle pass points that you would need to win. But whoever wins the battle pass today I will send 25 fresh nails straight from the spin factory. You can let me know your size preferences, your shape preferences, and I will get you what you need. But that is the inaugural award for winning the battle pass today. So battle pass winners are going to get 25 acrylic fake nails for freestyle Frisbee. That sounds really cool. First run product from the spin factory. Thank you, James, for, uh, for putting that forward. So Okay, awesome. Well, let's talk about the prize for the the actual athletes, though, which I think is, you know, a lot more relevant. Uh, I mean, it's all relevant, but, you know, all these people around the world, you guys are battling to become the first indie freestyle disc challenger champion. We had, uh, you know, the junior division only last year. This event graduated from the Tiny Room Challenge, but here we are. This is the Indie Freestyle Disc Championship Global Competition Challenger Division. If you win, we're going to give you this trophy. I'm not going to be there to give it to you in person. But I'm going to give it to you like this and find a way to get it to you. Uh, we have a digital certificate uh, that we've put together and signed for you um, that we're going to mail over and that you can, you know, huge shout out to yesterday's winner, Alma Kusma, who absolutely shredded um so proud of her it's amazing to watch her continue to grow um and this title i think is just gonna fuel her uh growth and dominance in the sport of freestyle so it'll look like that but with your name on it um and you know we're really excited to see you play so with that i've only got a couple more things before we get started well, wait, Let's, if you win the junior challenger division, you will also get 25 free nails from the spin factory. Wow. Okay. So this uh, prize just got extended to the winners of the challenger division as well. You will get 25 custom nails from the spin factory. Awesome. Okay. So let's introduce our celebrity judges today. So the way this is going to work, 1v1 battles, one player, whoever's up top first on that battle pass will go. They get 10 seconds to do their hardest tricks, their best moves. The other player will then respond and they'll do their 10 second combo of tricks. Our celebrity judging panel will determine who did the hotter combo. These are best two out of three battles. So at that point, in the second point, whoever won the first point will have to go first. Uh, if Obviously, if the same person wins two points, that battle's over, that person moves on. If there's a split and it's 1-1, one, one, whoever won the second point has to go first in the third point. So we've got three celebrity judges today. I'm so excited uh, to welcome them and uh, to have them with us. Let's introduce from Poland, but live streaming from uh, Italy, uh, Timik Rotek. Timik, what's up, bro? 
Uh, ciao, hi guys, hi all the participants, hi all the viewers. I'm so happy to, to be here again, especially after yesterday's amazing, amazing uh, performance from all the juniors. I'm looking for so much creativity for uh, like the everything I can see and mostly the, the, the freestyle. I'm super happy to, to see all people, the community growing from all around the world. And I just can't wait to, to, to see you guys playing. And that actually brought up a really interesting question I wanted to ask you, Timmy. Like, what are you looking for in these combos? Or what advice could you give, strategic advice, for each of these players to try to win over your vote? Uh, I would say consistency. To Today, I would like really people to, to see that they are they get catching the disc. Uh, for me, it's like uh, putting the dot at the end of the sentence. So it really shows that the player is also confident about the, the moves he's, uh, he's doing, he's performing. Uh, but I also want to be surprised. You know, I want my jaw to go like down and be like, what, what? <laughs> Let me process what happens on, uh, in, in front of my screen. That, that's what I'm looking today. And the happiness, smile. I want all you players to, to enjoy the, the thing you are doing, the viewers to, to be happy to see all these people doing freestyle. Dude, thank you, Timic. That's really fantastic advice. Uh, I hope we all take that to heart. Most fun wins. Um, with that, let's introduce from the United States of America, my teammate and partner. So happy to introduce Katie Gimma. How are you? Hey, everyone. I'm doing really well. Yesterday was so fun to be a part of. I love seeing the creativity and the way that the kids just go for it. I'm all about going for it. My advice is you're on the ladder challenge. We want to see what you've got. We want to see what you've invented. We want to see how you're experimenting with the disc. Experimentation. Love that, Katie. Thank you so much. And last but not least, our head judge, the vice president also of the FPA. Huge shout out to the FPA. Uh, who is our partner in a lot of ways to make this event a reality. Thank you very much for joining us, Eduardo Turi. And what's going on? <laughs> Thanks, Daniel. Really excited to be here. Thanks, Daniel. Really excited to be here and looking forward to see all the players. There are many that I haven't seen play, like I've never seen play. play. So I'm really looking forward to new styles, new tricks, and to be... Yeah, as Tim is saying, to let my jaw drop. So, I, and you kind of already answered this, but just to ask it another way, like, what are you looking for uh, in these 10 second combos or what advice would you give to these athletes to try and win your vote? I think, yeah, I think uh, like it's a competition, so you want, uh, like be solid but at the same time we all want to be excited so uh, i think just show us what you got show us your move and don't be afraid to to do mistakes uh just go for it uh it's just two or three chances chances to show your game so like yeah be excited be and excite us cool awesome so with that, you know, uh, just a couple last shout outs. I want to give a humongous thank you to our executive producer, Ryan Young, who is making everything happen behind the scenes. Huge applause and shout out um, to Ryan. Thanks. We could not do this without you. It's awesome to partner with you uh, and bring this event to life. Thank you to Mystic, who did all the videos, the graphics um, and, you know, the creative work for this event. Thank you again to the FPA, to XDisc, um, and to everybody who is making this event a reality. Mostly the friends, teachers, coaches, parents, supporters, spectators, and Jamily from around the world. And of course, the participants for all your time and training for this uh, and being here for it. So guys, we're ready to get started. Um, and I hope you're ready too. Let's head over to the battle pass. We'll start the first battle now. Best two out of three. We've got Tim Rohrer, previous tiny room champion, I believe, coming to us from Bern, Switzerland. Uh, he is going to carry forward a legacy that his team, you know, his team did amazing yesterday. Let's just start there. Uh, Joya, 
and Kuno and Felix all absolutely shredded. Any one of them could have won the whole thing. Uh, I'm so psyched for this Swiss team and where they're going to go. But today we have the distinct honor and privilege of watching Tim Rohrer. So Tim, you get to kick off the whole event, buddy. Can't wait for it. Uh, we're going to give you some music. Take your time, take a breath, and you got 10 seconds to show us your moves. Wow! Unbelievable start to this event. And wow, Tim really brought it. He went for it with a risky upside down throw, left-handed delay. Could this guy even delay the last time we watched him play? I don't remember. He upside down elbow tip, man after my heart to the upside down guidance. That's a huge statement from Tim Rohr to kick us off. Yeah, that's incredible. I think a lot of times when someone wins, it's really hard for them to keep the fire, to keep getting better and keep improving. And clearly Tim has kept that fire going he's gotten so much better than we last saw him incredible risk to start with the upside down combo really appreciate that the elbow tip he's clearly a man after daniel's heart and also what a self-set we don't see that often especially from our younger competitors such a strong self-set and he almost used like a jason sulky technique he went really low between his legs to generate lots of spin and really get his lower body involved and clearly it paid off so super impressive start yeah, good call out. One of the hard challenges of the, the indie part of this tournament is you have to throw your own spin um, and you have to make space to do that. And uh, that was a cool technique we saw from Tim. OK, heading over to Japan, where it is after midnight, we have Tetsuo Noguchi. Cannot wait to see you play, bro. Thank you for joining us from around the world. Um, we are so fired up to see Japanese freestyle, which, by the way, has a fantastic legacy. Uh, it dates back to the late 70s. Tetsuo, I'm not sure how long he's been playing, um, but we're about to see his skills. He knows what he needs to do, do to beat Tim in this first point. Tetsuo, it is your turn to play. Come out in front of the camera. Let's give him uh, some music. Tetsuo! I know Tetsuo's English is... I can't hear. <laughs> Just play! <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, I wish I had a note like that. It's your I'm turn, about, dude! I'm about to have a note. Okay, okay. My note's not as good as his. <laughs> yeah! Beautiful first move here from Tetsuo. Wow, that was amazing. Let's check out this instant replay. So he goes for the behind the back sweep under the leg catch. Nice, get points on the board. Then the scarecrow and a beautiful ending statement. Yesterday we talked about how to create a story with your combo and you only get 10 seconds, but he really had a beginning, middle and end there, which I really appreciated. Yeah, I really like it. I think each one of his combos was a little more succinct than Tim's, but I'm not sure they were necessarily better together than what 
Tim did. I think it's going to be a tricky one to judge. It kind of depends on what you value because I think Tim's had a little more like, or maybe a little less flow in the sense that like he kind of did a move, recovered, did another move, which happens a lot when you play upside down and it's hard to keep that tempo going because of all the variance in the disc. But he showed maybe more difficult moves and hit that like amazing upside down guidance. But what we just saw was two really clean combos that were pretty consecutive. There wasn't really a lot of pausing in it. There might have been a little bit of hand shuffling, but two strong combos. And I'm curious how the judges will come down on it. Okay, so let's turn it over as we'll do in uh, in rhythm each point, And let's check in with head judge Edo Turi for the results of this first point. Yeah, kudos to Tetsuo and uh, uh, team is also a great player. What a first battle to start off with the, uh, with, with the day. And uh, team gets the first point. Tim Rohrer from Switzerland. You received the first point. This is a best two out of three battle. And you'll now again play first uh, in the second point. If you win it, you move on. Let's give him some music. Wow, great stuff. He knew exactly how much time he had. He put a lot of great content into that. Goes for the, you know, right side up start. Shows some really classic freestyle moves, including a beautifully executed chair uh, and a bad attitude to, to seal the deal. That was incredible. I think that was even stronger than his last sequence. I really liked how much cleaner it was and more consecutive it was. There was really no wasted efforts, no wasted moves. It just went from move to move to move. Also love seeing the roll set to a catch. We've seen more and more players, especially younger players, start to get the roll. But we haven't seen very many of them actually use that as a set into a catch. And then pretty much picture perfect form on the bad attitude in the chair. Especially like chair can be hard to make look really good. But I think he nailed it there. I think it looked like a fantastic chair. Nice. All right. So... Let's now turn it back to Japan, Tetsuo Noguchi. Let's give him the sign, James. It's his turn to play. Tetsuo. Tetsuo, Tetsuo. You're gonna get it, I, I have faith. Tetsuo's unique style. We're talking a lot about, you know, how the judges want to see that. Everyone at home wants to see that. That's really why we're here is to, you know, get to see these unique styles. And he really did his movements in a way that that kind of surprised me. I don't know. I have no idea what that move he did where the disc was almost resting on this strange part of his arm. That looked really cool. I would love to see that a few more times in slow-mo to understand what it was. Also, really great turnover. We don't see a ton of turnovers. Really nice to see that. The only thing I would have liked to have seen that I think would have been an improvement, but maybe it was a stylistic choice, was I wish he had set the upside down disc a little bit higher to make a little more attention and drama before he went into his behind the head catch. But I also think there was something stylistic about it. It was sort of this quick, fast, unexpected movement, and that definitely added a little bit of personality to it. Yeah, I'm not sure how much Tetsuo is uh, like keenly aware of like this battle and like <laughs> able to watch his competitor. But knowing what Tim uh, put down in that second point, I think he had to go for something more difficult. Yeah, um, let's see how the judges felt. Let's turn it over to Ed Oturi for the result of the second point. Yeah, nice start from Tetsuo and shout out to him. But unfortunately, Tim gets also the second point and gets the So point. Tim Rohrer from Switzerland is moving on. Uh, thank you, Tetsuo, 
so much uh, for playing and for showing us your unique style. Uh, you rock, dude. Get some sleep. <laughs> but um, it was amazing to see you play. And uh, shout out to all Japanese freestylers and the uh, the Tokyo and Yoyogi crew, uh, for sure. So, okay, moving on to the second battle. Anna Fusari, who is uh, actually the girlfriend of Emmanuel uh, Faustini, as we know, Zanardi. So this is Zanardi's girlfriend, Anna Fusari, who's relatively new to freestyle, but she is on the fast track to stardom. Can't wait to see her play. She goes up against Andres Figueroa from Cuba. We saw his kids play yesterday. They played amazing. If you remember Tomas Linares. Uh, oh, actually, sorry. Tomas was uh, from Angie's team. But uh, Andres' kids played amazing. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing Andres play today as well. So Ana will play first. This is the best two out of three matchup. So if we have, there they are. Hi, Zanardi. Hi, Ana. It's your turn to play. Ready? Hi, guys. We are ready. Thanks awesome. to uh, everyone for this opportunity. And really great job, guys, for what you are doing for this sport. I really love that. Thank Thanks. Thank Thanks. Thanks. Thank especially you. yesterday was so emotional. See all those kids play freestyle. Make me believe in the future of this sport. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Cool. Really. Appreciate the feedback. All Thanks. right. It's your turn to play. Best two yes. out of three matchup. Anna, you play first. We're going to give you some music. You got 10 seconds to show us. Wow. Woo! What an awesome first combo from Anna. I don't think she was even going to get that Gaitis in time if she caught it. But unfortunately, like negative execution does play in even after the time thing. So they're going to look at that execution error as an error. But look at these amazing, creative, different types of skills that she demonstrates. I love the coin uh, flip, you know, on the ground, the way she kind of spanned this third disc to the ground when she didn't need it. Some of the first juggling we've seen, certainly in the challenger division. Great job, Anna. I'm impressed. Yeah, I really like this. I think it's a good example of it's never too early to express yourself. So even when you're learning the game and you don't feel like you have a lot of technical skills, you can still find lots of ways of showing your personality and show what you can do. And she really made the most of where she is as a freestyler. And I think that was really exciting. I also know that I was getting pleading messages from Zanardi yesterday for a tutorial on a very difficult move that I hope she is planning to do. I actually didn't realize she was competing today when I was putting that together. I was like, why did Zanardi want this so badly? But I'm hoping we see that move. And then last fun fact, Zanardi was our first ever freestyle partner. And it's really exciting to see him back involved in the game and clearly spreading the jam. So really excited to see both Zanardi and Anna here today. Absolutely. Cool. So let's kick it over to Cuba, where we have Andres Figueroa. Hey, sporting the... Oh, what happened? Don't tell me that's your only disc, bro. <laughs> No, he's just showing it off. That one's got our name on it. Uh, hola, ¿cómo estás? Uh, es, es increíble. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this goes for my boys in Cuba. Excelente, Andrés. Es, uh, es tu tiempo. Vamos a poner música y tienes 10 segundos para jugar. Vamos. Con la música. Excelente, amigo. Wow, okay, so 
a lot to uncover there. I think, first of all, got to say that the Scarecrow was after time. You know, but Anna also went after time. Play, but play, in, you know, the junior division, we were a little more lenient with the time and stuff. But as we get now into the challenger division, we're going to be a little more strict on, and I know the judges will do on, the, the what is actually accomplished in the 10-second time frame. Uh, but, you know, he showed a lot of great skills here. I believe a clock and counter throw right and left hand to yourself. That's really impressive. Um, so what what do you think? I was really impressed. I haven't seen him play much before. He played with a lot of speed and fluidity, which is really impressive. And he kind of reminded me a little bit of Pipo with how he strung his moves together. It almost looked like he was starting to do a Tempest, but then kind of went on to some other different kinds of moves, but showed a lot of stuff really quickly. I think if he moves on, the challenge is going to be to almost hold back so that he can keep more moves for his future combos, but strong start. Cool. All right, let's kick this over to Edo Turi uh, for the result of this first point. Yeah, Andres gets the first point. So Andres Figuera gets the point, and you will now need to play first in this second point. So we want new moves from each player. Um, pero Andres, es, uh, es tu tiempo a jugar en el segundo punto. Uh, fuiste el ganador del primer. Okay. Gets the scarecrow somehow right at the time call. Like you said, like he's just playing so fast. This tipping sequence is kind of uh, almost like machine gun esque, but not really the, the same aesthetic as you'd see from Paul Kenny. I, I mean, just almost hard to watch how fast he plays. Yeah, really cool. It's we pointed this out, I think, about Alma yesterday. I like how he swings his body through on his catches and a lot of his other moves that's such a beautiful expression of freestyle form really like to see that and i may have imagined it but it looked like there was some really gusting wind right when he threw it at the beginning and to do what he just did with that much wind is incredibly impressive and the last thing is i love how he uses his long limbs i think i also have long limbs and it's always a struggle to figure out how to make them aesthetically pleasing and he's already got it down this early that's amazing Cool. All right. So kicking it back over to Italy, Anna Fusari, you are up in the second point. She went for it. What do you have a name for that, James? Was that the move you were talking about? That's the move we're talking about. I don't actually know what it's called. I always call it the turtle roll, and I'm not sure if that's the right roll, but she was pretty close there, which is incredible. And I like these opening catches she started with. Um, really good poise, really good control, and I think she's showing the framework to become a great freestyler. Oh, it was so close at the end there. It just kind of pivoted right in the middle of her back so she wasn't able to recover, but Otherwise, was really strong. I doubt it's going to be enough because of how clean Andres' second combo was. But Anna, you have so much potential as a freestyler. Oh, my gosh. Keep playing. Uh, keep smiling and, and just showing us your creativity the way you did. Uh, Zanardi, you have a great coach in him. Um, and I can't wait to see uh, where your freestyle game is going to take you in the future. But, you know... I'm not the decider of these things. Let's check in with Ed Oturi for the result of this second point. Yeah, another shout out for the Randy roll down to the back. <laughs> yeah, uh, the Randy roll. Andres, Andres gets the point. So Andres Figueroa from Cuba moving on to the next round. He will take on Tim Rohrer in the quarterfinals. But let's turn now to the preliminary matchup of Karsik Shai versus Natalia Agudelo. Karsik will play first. He joins us all the way from Hong Kong. Karsik, it has been amazing to watch you develop as a freestyler, um, and we cannot wait to see you play. 
Um, so Ryan, if we've got him ready to go, we'll give him the video spotlight. Uh, there he is. Hey, Karsik, we'll give you some music uh, and it's your turn to play. Way to go, bro. Absolutely love that first combo. He goes for the two-handed counter set. He gave us an elbow tip. He gave us a foot tip on a kind of wobbly set. He's almost stabilized it with the kick tip. Uh, and then a nice uh, flamingo catch all in a pretty tiny room. This was a pretty expertly strategized first uh, combo, I would say. I think it was really smart. And I think we've seen a lot of growth from him from when he first came out here. It really looks like he's a lot more comfortable with playing and showed a lot more moves than we've seen before. So that's really great to see. I think the next step for him is, I can't believe how much spin he got on that two-handed set, the way he did it, but there is room for even more. I mean, he should just be ripping that thing way up in the air, get a little more spin, and then all new avenues will open up for him. Great advice. Okay, so entonces... De Colombia, Natalia, estamos super emocionados a verte jugar. Es tu tiempo. Uh, vamos a poner música para ti. Toma tu tiempo, respira y tienes 10 segundos. the piece of play from Natalia. Unfortunately, that first throw kind of gets away from her. I like that she then went on to the, the two-handed, which kind of saved her some time. She kind of stunned the kick tip we saw from Karsik with one of her own. Um, and this combo had a ton of potential. I think if she had hit it the way she wanted to, she would have put a ton of pressure on the judges. But with the two execution errors, it's going to be tough. Agreed. I really like that last kind of Fleming Guidus thing she went for. It's a very Colombian styled Guidus. It's a really cool move. She got really close to it. Also, it was a smart adjustment that her overhand didn't really work. And so she switched to the two handed set, which obviously served her a little bit better. But I'm in the advice dispensing mode right now. It may be hot in there, but I would close that door because I think it might be creating a little bit of a draft. And that might have contributed to that first miss throw. Okay, cool. So let's kick it over to Edo Turi for the result of the first point. Thank yeah. you, thank you. Nice playing by both, but Carthage with the Carthage with the clean play gets the point. So Carsick, Carsick from Hong Kong, you are up one zero, and you now play first in the second point. Okay, music please. left side bad attitude once again very clean combo one or two elements were similar but i'm not going to call them exactly the same necessarily um but this is just a really clean smart combo beautiful grapevine nice set into the bad attitude i love the bad attitude it was almost olivia-esque it was certainly the highlight of the combo really good form i like how we did it into the camera it definitely added a level of excitement I think, I don't know why I'm advising so much for now. I think he should think about relaxing his hand a little bit more, like his delay hand. It looks like it has a lot of tension. And I think that's causing him to pause a little bit more between moves because there's just a little bit more rigidness in that. But overall, the catch is what it's all about. And he nailed the catch. Okay, Natalia, you know what you need to do to force a third point here. It's your turn to play. Let's give her some music. Natalia, huge moves. I love that she just said 
James, your advice, screw your advice. I'm keeping that door wide open and throwing two overhands in your face. And she nails both of these combos with a lot of confidence and style. Uh, great behind the back catch to seal it up. Yeah, that was great. I love the keys to the highway set that she did. That was really clean and very extended. And she showed a lot of faith in that because she set it really high and kind of far away, which is pretty tricky to do in the tiny room. So it's going to be a tricky one to judge because I think all of the middle content of her moves was better. It was much more consecutive, much more fluid, which we really value. But obviously, we saw a better catch from Karsik. And sometimes the catch almost has too much weight because people really focus on it and emphasize it and can be a big part of your kind of difficulty score. But that's not necessarily right. And maybe the judges will think that, well, what matters is the entire combo. And I think we saw a better overall combo from Natalia. Or two combos, I should say. Okay, so let's turn this one over. I'm really excited to figure out the result of this point. Currently, uh, Natalia is down one point, but she has the chance maybe. Edo, how was the result of this second point? So uh, I personally follow both of them on Instagram, and I see them uh, practicing uh, uh, like constantly, so it's heartbreaking. But unfortunately, Karsi gets also the second point and advanced. So Karsik Shai takes the win, but Natalia, you played amazing. Uh, I can't wait to see you in Colombia. You're just continuing to grow and grow. Uh, it's so beautiful to watch. So thanks for joining. But Karsik Shai moving on to the quarterfinals. Okay, so moving right along, let's go to the matchup of Timo Zimmerman from Bern, Switzerland versus Angie Vargas from Bogota, Colombia. Timo plays first, so straight back to the gym in Bern, Switzerland. We've got Timo. Uh, it's your turn to play. Take your time. No rush at all. Let's give this guy some music, number 15, and see what he's got here in this first point. Wow, great first move, love the confidence, knew exactly how much time he had. I love, it's in particular, that turnover directly as a set to a spinning catch. Um, it was just that first throw that kind of had a bit of a, he didn't like it. He just grabbed it back and gave himself a second one. Probably a smart choice. Yeah, it was a really good recovery, and it was very smart because if that disc bounces off your finger and goes rolling on the floor, you're going to burn through your 10 seconds really quickly. But he grabbed it, gave himself the throw he needed, and hit a really good combo. And kind of what I was saying before, the younger you are, the throw is harder and harder. And it's not just about the strength, it's about the spacing. It's hard to make enough room on your body to throw that disc because the disc is just so big relative to your body. But Timo was very smart to kind of put his arm way off to the side to give him the room he needed for the throw. And then he used all of that spin to do quite a few moves a lot more than we usually see in the challenger division cool all right so kicking it back to uh i'm so sorry someone help me where are we oh angie vargas did i skip a battle you did <laughs> all right my bad guys but anyway here we are uh we're doing timo zimmerman versus angie vargas angie hola gracias uh, para tus niños ayer uh, eran increíble calidosos jugadores y uh, es tu tiempo a jugar. Vamos a poner música para ti y tienes 10 segundos. Vamos. Oh, wow. Great playing here from Angie. She's still going on, but her 10 seconds is up. But in that 10 seconds, she showed quite a lot. Uh, the angle that she tried to catch that bad attitude, almost like a, a trailing edge version or something. Yeah. Wow. Here. She's really good. I don't think I've ever seen her play before. She's a lot higher level than I expected. Really great self throw. She remi it almost reminds me of Benedict's throw. It's just generating so much power and it's really efficient looking. Like, 
it's much more effortless than a lot of people throw. And like you said, that bad attitude was awesome. She didn't quite get it, but she did keep it off the ground and kind of make it the kind of mistake that doesn't really hurt your score that much. But I think it's going to still be a little bit tricky for the judges to know who won this one. Okay, so kicking it over to Ed Oturi for the result of the first point. Yeah, great rolls and nice try on the bad attitude, but Timo gets the first point. So Timo Zimmerman takes the point. You are up 1-0 in this battle and now play first in the second point. That was one of the cleanest, most high-level combos we've seen in all of the videos we've done here. Check out this set to spinning pull, beautiful set to spinning barrel catch, huge high double leg over. Wow, Timo. Bring that to the world, bro. You're ready. I know. That's pretty much flawless. I think he's going to be ready to make waves in the pro division soon. I think almost because he's playing so well, my only word of advice is now he has to let himself get a little more out of control. I think he's so comfortable and so confident that set the disc higher, put it out there and just know you're going to get it because you're that good now. Now is the time to really start stretching your game because I think you're a pro. I mean, that's an incredible sequence. Okay, Angie, uh, it is your turn to play and in the second point. Okay. Music. She is playing great and look at this tiny room she doesn't have a lot of space in there and you know unfortunately once again you know she kind of went over time and then ended up not getting that kick tip so my first advice is know what 10 seconds is uh at, i'm gonna say it in spanish one time pero angie en el futuro necesitas entender mejor tu 10 segundos y parar tu combo un poco uh, más temprano but uh, she did great, and like I love that behind the back down to the flamingo shoot. That was great. Yeah, this is another example of it's really hard to see these events because a lot of people are playing for the first time, and that means that sometimes two of the best competitors meet each other in the first round, and I think this is a great example of that. I don't think we've ever seen NG play before, and clearly she could have been one of the favorites but she also happens to be going up against one of the clear favorites. And that was a really good sequence and the judges may view it differently, but I actually think going over the 10 seconds is what made it clear her clearer because that's when she had her drop and that kind of balances out the scale a lot more. Cause otherwise she was in a similar world of hitting moves really consecutively. And if anything, even though maybe her moves were a little bit easier, I think she strung them to be together better. I think they were really consecutive, not in the sense not only in the sense of being restricted to restricted, but the tempo of it was very fluid. Okay, so let's turn it over to Ed Oturi for the result of the second point. Yeah, the skill level that team is showing is just like out of the division, like it's pro level and he gets the point. So Timo Zimmerman, moving on. No surprise there. Amazing play. Pero Angie también, muy buen juego. Y uh, espero verte pronto en Colombia. Timo Zimmerman, moving on. Okay, so we now turn to the battle of Michael James. Uh, Wait, do we want to go back to the battle we missed? Oh, uh, shoot, my bad. All right, thank you guys for keeping me on this. Excuse me. I missed one battle before, so we'll go back. So. Uh, I'll just call out the next two battles. So we're going to do Laurent Isler versus Jamiu Salawu. And on deck is Michael James versus Preston Smith. So right now we'll do Laurent Isler versus Jamiu Salawu. On deck, Michael James, Preston Smith. 
So Laurent Isler will play first. Laurent, traditional disc dog player, but we've seen him in the tiny room division. Uh, as you said, dark horse has so much potential. Laurent, can't wait to see you play, bro. It's great to see you. Um, thanks for joining us. Take your time. Take a breath. Let's give him some music. From France, Laurent Isler. Oh, yeah. Great moves there from Lawrence. Super strategic. Just shows us great skills on counter, no less. Uh, that chest roll, like, you're ready to take that to the next level on form and make your arms a little bigger and more symmetrical. Um, but that's a great combo. Way to lay it down on this first point. Yeah, really good. I love to see counter. Really good flat game. It definitely looks like the French style. He reminds me a lot of Raphael. And has this very kind of upright straight positioning which is kind of cool and kind of unique so really good start i'm happy to see my dark horse pick on the podcast just crushing his first move and we'll see where it goes from here all right so i cannot wait to see him play jamiu salawu i had the distinct honor and privilege of meeting Jamiu and being there in person with these Nigerians earlier this year. Jamiu is their leader, the president of the Nigerian Flying Disc Sports Association. He is doing so much for disc sports in Africa. Uh, we love you, Jamiu, uh, and we're going to give you some music. It's your turn to play. Oh, oh. Yeah. I can't believe it. What a great first combo here from Jamil. Really fast tipping style. Love the way he tips that under his leg. That's classic. That's old school. He goes down for the, the catch on the ground, under the legs, then throws it upside down all within the time. Tons of pressure here. This is not easy for the judges. Yeah, like you said, really old school on the tipping under the leg where the tip actually occurs with the leg over the disc. That's a super leg warmer 1980s style move. Pretty cool to see it get busted out in 2022. Again, huge improvement from our competitors. He's come a long way since the last time we saw him. And I think they were, I, can't, I don't think he was fiddling. I think he was doing a really valid upside down delay, which is also really great progress. We haven't seen that as much from Nigeria. So, Awesome to see them just continuing to improve. Excellent. So let's now turn it over to Edo Turi for the result of this first point, an exciting one. Yeah, I think it's a similar situation as the battle before, where both player, you can see both player have high skills level. Uh, and it's a split decision, but Shamu gets the first point. Jamiu Salawu from Nigeria takes the first point and you play first here in the second point. So you're up once again. We need new moves from you. Let's see what you got. I'm so curious how this is going to end. What the? Uh, one frame after another. <laughs> oh. I don't think he caught it because I see the disc there on the ground and it was after the time anyway. Um, but, you know, I respect that he did, in fact, show us new skills. He goes for the traditional, you know, just showing us the, the, the freestyle fundamentals, really. Um, I think, you know, that kick tip got away from him. So he's leaving the door wide open for Laurent to push a third point. Yeah, and this is the disadvantage you have when you go first. You just have to lay it down and hope for the best. But now the door is cracked open and Laurent just needs to know what to do. Okay, Laurent, we hope you know what to do here to force a third point. You're up. This is smart play, very smart play from Lorian. I think he hid 
something kind of like there was like a little bit of a like a rethrow in the middle of the combo but like it was very you know it was well done like it was he kept the flow throughout his move i think it was blatantly enough to force the third point which is all you need you don't want to show everything Agreed. I think it was enough. And I like how he kind of turned his behind the back into a scarecrow. There's something to be said for you get your catch. And if it's not quite the form you wanted, there's still time to extend that body out to make the body position that you want. And he did that there. And I think it was pretty cool. Awesome. So let's kick this over to Edo Turi for the result of the second point. Yeah, it was enough indeed. And uh, Lawrence gets the point. Okay, so Lauren Isler takes the point one to one. I believe this is the first battle so far that's gone to three points. So it's winner take all. Lauren Isler, you are up in the third and final point of this battle. Whoa! from Lauren, super well executed and with some confidence and pizzazz. Yeah, that was his best move so far. Awesome that he had that still left in the tank for the do or die battle three. And he really exemplified one of the pieces of advice I've been giving a lot the last two days, which is he set that chair catch so high in the air. He did not need to set it that high, but doing that made the move so much more dramatic so much more aesthetically pleasing and really lay down the gauntlet and let's see what Jamiu can bring to the table now. Okay, Jamiu, you know what you need to do. I believe in you, my friend. You can do this. You are up in this third and final point. Love the twirl directly to the back roll, but then he misses the chair. Oh, We've yeah, it was so close. I really like the the bail option though. Like he kind of lost what he was doing, and he went right into the twirl and was very clean with really good flow. And then that behind the head roll is so hard to do, and he did execute it. There might have been a couple spots where he didn't quite make contact. But that is so hard to do. There's not a lot of people in the Chandra division that would even attempt that move. And to execute it the way he did is super impressive. Dang, the chair is so elusive sometimes. It just gets everybody. I I just wish he could have kept that clean to the end um, to put some additional pressure on. But great playing from both competitors. Let's kick this one over to our head judge for the result. Yeah, I wouldn't like to make this decision, and the judges also think it's a split decision, but uh, Laurent gets the point, unfortunately. So Lauren Isler is fulfilling the prophecy that James has set out for him. He moves on to the quarterfinals. Jamil, keep playing, keep growing, dude. Let this one fuel you and make you hungrier for the next one. You're playing so great, um, so congratulations, but unfortunately... Uh, you didn't do it this time. So now we're going to skip on. Sorry, I, uh, you know, I made this mistake before. But we're ready now for the battle of Michael James versus Preston Smith. Michael James from Nigeria is the brother of James James, who we remember seeing uh, before in the tiny room. Michael James versus Preston Smith. Michael's up first. Oh yeah, Michael. Way to go, bro. This is maybe the most improved player that we've seen. Uh, I remember seeing Michael play and, and training with him. He's even done some lessons with me. This is a determined young man who wants to be a Frisbee freestyle champion in the future. And he might do it here today if he keeps playing like that. Just clean, confident, uh, and beautiful. 
Wow, those roles were absolutely incredible. They were full contact all the way down. An incredible speed too. A lot of times people roll really quickly because they're kind of in a hurry and they know it's going to fall off at some point. But his roll just smoothly glided down. He made the highway and just directed the car onto the on-ramp. Really great. Love the back roll. Showed a lot of style and personality with that behind the head catch. I kind of think about that as like a Daniel move, just that really beautiful, just boom, right to the side. Incredible improvement. Excited to see what else he has. All right. Awesome. So let's turn it over to Preston Smith. Uh, Preston learned to play from his dad, but also in part in New York City. Uh, I'm certainly rooting for you, Preston. Uh, just give me a quick nod. Is this your first freestyle Frisbee tournament that you're playing in ever? Yes, it is. Let's go, bro. Congratulations. <laughs> um, we're super excited uh, to watch you play. Uh, you know how it works. We'll put on some music, take a breath, take your time. You got 10 seconds here in the first point. The goat is at the end, and he kind of did a fakey move. Great stuff here from Preston. I like how relaxed he is. He's taking his time. Uh, I actually think, like, you know, based on what we saw from Michael and how clean he played, like, it, it's it's there's a tough strategy because the second you drop it, you're done for. So he kept it clean. Was it enough? I don't know. The yeah, I can't see the move. I'm fixing my video now. That was really incredible. I think the goatess at the end was really important there. I think if he has separation, that's what's, that's going to be what does it in really great form. And I'm super excited to have another young American freestyler enter the scene. And I hope that we get to play together soon. Awesome. So let's kick this one over to Edo for the result of the first point. Preston get the first point. So Preston Smith by small margin is able to take this first point. So Preston, you are up first here in the second point. Wow. All right. So this is always interesting. It sucks because you have to play first. And then if you drop it, that door's wide open. He dropped it twice. Um, so not the best effort from Preston here in the second point, if I'm honest. I have no idea what happened, uh, <laughs> but I'm sure I'm sure we'll find out soon what happens. So continue okay. on. <laughs> OK, so you can't see anything, James. I will be able to shortly. Okay, no problem. So I'm just going to, I'll run with these in the meantime. You know, hopefully, I just want to quickly check the judges can all see what's going on at least. Okay, yep. amazing. So let's check in with Edo Turi for the, uh, oh, excuse me, I'm so sorry. So we're in the second point. It's 1-0 Preston, but we just watched Preston make some mistakes. Uh, so take your time, Michael. You know what you need to do here to force a third point, a clean Clean combo wins it for you, for sure. Let's see what you got. Give him some music. Oh, no. He dropped. So I'll tell you what happened, James. He did some great moves. Uh, you know, actually nothing that was that that dramatically impressive, but he was keeping it off the ground, showing some good skills, showed some different skills, but did a set for a laser at the end, and it just escapes his hand. It was the most exciting part of the combo, but then he ends up taking one drop too. So, you know, this is the kind of battle that's also not easy to judge, but kind of sucks when neither player really hits their combo, and then it's got to go to the judges. Yeah, well, no idea what happened, but now I have everything back up and running and I'll see the next battles and I can't wait to go back and watch the replay because these are two 
exciting new players. All right. So Ed Oturi, who won this second point? So we want to see a third battle. So Michael gets, Michael gets the point. Fair enough. So Michael James takes the point. It's 1-1, ladies and gentlemen. Michael James, you are up first here in this third and final point. Let's go, bro. You got this. Give him some music. Goes for the laser, he gets it, even gets the the back roll and the dance afterward. I love this great play from Michael when he needed it most. He's really incredible. I love the under the leg tip he did there. That was super clean. And man, that roll, I can't get over it. I know he did the roll before, and maybe that'll matter depending on what happens with Preston. But man, it is so clean, and he's got those really long arms. And I know from personal experience how hard it is to get that roll down all the way down, fingertip to fingertip. But he's already figured it out, and that's going to be just so useful for him down the road. All right, so kicking it back to the United States of America, Preston Smith, you know what you need to do here to win this third and final point. You had the benefit of watching your competitor. I believe in you, Preston. Um, so if you're ready, uh, we want to see your newest, best tricks. Let's see what you got. Oh, yeah. Great stuff from Preston. Keeps it clean all the way through. Three nice combos. I'm not sure if it's going to be enough, but regardless... For your first tournament, I think you can be so, so proud of how you played here today, Preston, um, regardless of whether you move on. Congratulations. Great job, dude. Can't wait to continue uh, to see you grow as a freestyler. Yeah, super clean. I didn't see all the other moves, so I don't know how much you might have repeated before. But that the cleanliness is a huge factor. I think even from a lot of players that we see that might have a little more technical skill than you do, they don't have that cleanliness yet. And that's something that can be really hard to develop and you already have it. And just as you get better, just keep that cleanliness in mind. I mean, keep pushing it to have that beautiful game because it just makes such a difference to the audience to see that control and comfort and that stable disc. It's what makes it seem like magic. It's what makes it seem like it's on an invisible string. But when it's wobbly or shaky, that's when that the illusion breaks and the magic goes away, but you have it already. So keep it up. Great. So, all right. It's one to one, ladies and gentlemen. We'll kick this over to Ed Oturi to see who wins the third point and the battle. Yeah, I agree with James uh, with the clean play, but Michael also got the clean play and got us excited. So, he gets the point. So Michael James from Abuja, Nigeria, is moving on to the quarterfinals. Amazing play, knocking out the young American. Preston, we will see you at the next challenge. Thanks for playing. But today, it's Michael James. And he will go on to face Timo Zimmerman in the quarterfinal. But we have two last uh, first-round matchups to get through. Let's go for the battle of Peter Dinan versus Mikey Thompson. So straight back to Abuja, Peter will play first, Peter Dinan, uh, and this is, we're looking on the side, you can see that, it, yeah, Peter Dinan, uh, you're up. Let's give him some music. demonstrated from Peter on his first move. Oh, no. Oh, man, he dropped it at the end, but what the heck? This guy's improved so much as well from when I saw him last. The youngest competitor we have in the challenger division. Like I said, he could have easily played yesterday in the junior division if he wanted to, but he wanted the challenge. I'm glad he did it, and great playing here from Peter. 
Yeah, he's awesome. He also got a uh, shout out on the podcast because I remember him being a big fan favorite last time. He just plays with so much energy and excitement. But now his skills have come so much further that I think he's not going to be just the fan favorite. He's going to be one of the favorites just to win the whole thing. I mean, that's really impressive play from him. And it's super exciting to see that much improvement so quickly. All right. So kicking it over to Chile, Mikey, como estas? De Chile, es tu tiempo a jugar. Uh, do we have Mikey? Mikey, Mikey, yes. Where is he? No Mikey, right? Hmm. All right, in that case, let's go ahead and uh, skip that battle for now. Uh, you know, we'll we'll move on to the next round. And if he doesn't make it back in time, wait, uh, yeah, I still don't see him. Then, uh, then Walter is just going to advance. Or, oh, sorry, sorry, that's, all right, I'm sorry. I'm looking at my battle pass. So we're probably going to advance. No, we have to. Peter, Peter advances. That's it. Sorry, Mikey. Missed your chance. Dang. Mikey's from Chile, and he's a wonderful player developing freestyle in Santiago. Just triple checking, but yeah, he didn't make it. Okay, um, so Peter Peter wins and moves on, and honestly, I think he was going to win anyway, um, because like if he's playing like that, uh, that was going to be really tough to beat. So congratulations, Peter, and let's move on to this last first-round matchup. Okay, guys? Does that sound good, Ryan? Great. So, uh, so Peter moves on. You'll just see the name of Mohamed Reza because we had an Iranian player that was meant to play today. He couldn't make it. Um, we couldn't update the bracket. But Peter Danan is the one who moves into the quarterfinal position. And let's see who's going to take him on in the quarters. Let's go to the matchup of Stasiak Sapirzinski and Walter Dunbar. Stasiak will play first. So let's head over to Poland. Hi, Stasiak. We'll give you some music and it's your turn to play. Yeah, nice kick tip to the behind the back. This is my first time watching Stasiak play. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how many you know, how many tournament experience he has, or certainly in this event, it's his first time. And I think rookie mistake here, that drop, like it really ate up by the time he got the disc, a good portion of that 10 seconds. So you really have to, you know, know your 10 seconds and rush if something does happen to be able to show some content. But ultimately he does that. He gives us the kick tip the behind the back and shows a really good level of skill. Yeah, I think some of that's just bad luck, right? I mean, sometimes the, the way the disc falls, if it rolls away and, and we can't see exactly what's happening on the floor there. So I think that's just a little bit of bad luck for, you know, a new player. And you will get better and learn how to manage that kind of luck in the future. You can kind of learn how to make sure when you do drop it, that's not the kind of thing that happens. But that just takes time to get comfortable with that. But otherwise, to see someone like this who we've never seen before come out so strong, he looks very fluid, very comfortable with the disc. And I'm excited to see how he grows. Cool. So kicking it over now to the United States once again. This is a great story. Walter Dunbar, it's been 25 years since Walter has played in a freestyle tournament. He played in junior freestyle frisbee events in the 90s. What a great comeback story. Walter, we can't wait to see you play. Let's give him some music and see what you got. Oh yeah, get the catch. All right, we're st all this stuff is way after 10 seconds. So definitely know your 10 seconds, but this was blatantly enough uh, just based on cleanliness. And also just, you know, I like to see different styles of play. And by the way, that uh, padiddle transfer blind from one hand to the other got a little wobble in it, but that's super hard. That, that's a shout out to James Brown 
uh, from Canada, but that, that's a tough move. Yeah, old school style. Really like to see the bediddle and not just any bediddle, but a really interesting and advanced bediddle. And I really like the stuff he did after time. Unfortunately, that's probably not going to count, but he should think about doing similar kinds of moves in his next round because I think they will be very helpful to him and be viewed positively by our judges. Excellent. Okay, so let's kick this over to the judges for the result of the first point. Walter gets the fourth point. So Walter Dunbar takes the point. Walter, you are up first in the second point. All righty. Oh, yeah. Big Guidus knows when to quit. Amazing play here from Walter. This could be the dark horse that, that we didn't know about because he looks like he's got some serious skills. Yeah, really amazing. That Guidus was so huge. I also like the veteran move to have two different discs. He had his Padiddle disc, which I assume had a little bit less slick on it, and then his traditional freestyle disc, which looked like it was slicked up. That was a truly clean, consecutive, beautiful combo in a tiny room, no less. Awesome to see it from, but I think you're right, a new dark horse for this competition. So kicking it back to Poland, Stasiek Sapierzynski. Let's give him some music. So oh, this was an interesting combo. I mean, first of all, he did the kick tip in the first one. Um, and he goes to it here a few times with only 10 seconds. Like you showed us, you demonstrated, you can do that. Like move on, show us a new skill. Cause like then that second one eluded you and you didn't have any more time. You needed, you needed to do more to show what Walter already had showed. You had the advantage to see that, but you know, Given that this may be your first tournament, definitely the first one in this format that we've seen, really strong showings. Uh, and I think you have a lot to be proud of, Stasiak, and we're looking forward to seeing you play in future competitions. Yeah, I respect it. I don't know the limits of his game, and maybe he's just playing to his string strengths, keeping with what he's comfortable with. He wants to do his best. Maybe he's not trying to make it as far as everybody else. He's just trying to put on a good show, and he showed some really great fundamental techniques He's got everything he needs to keep building, and he should definitely look forward to the next competition. So kicking it over to Edo Turi for the result. Yeah, Edo, you there? Uh, good uh, shout out to Stasiek for his play, but Walter gets a point. So Walter Dunbar moves on to the quarterfinals where he'll take on Peter Dinan. So guys, uh, we, it, we have about 45 minutes left on the original two hours. We're through round one. I want to encourage everybody to go to ifdc.tv. Now is the key moment where you need to make your second round picks. There's 25 nails custom made on the line here. So go over to IFDC. Now is the moment. Make your second round picks. Um, and let's see, you know, what let's see who's gonna make the best picks here. But uh go ahead and move forward, Muhammad Dreza Ryan, into that position. But it's actually Peter Danan uh that you know that's taking that spot and moving on to face Walter. Um, and you know, I'm gonna check in quickly with the judges and then moving on for the next two rounds. We'll just need to increase the pace of play and keep our conversations, James, a little bit shorter. But with okay. that, I want to just check in Timic. Uh, Timic, thanks for joining us again, one of our celebrity judges. What do you think so far? What's working? What's not working? Uh, just give us a couple thoughts. Um, I'm enjoying it so much. I have seen so many different performances from 
every single player. We've seen some upside downs. We've seen some uh, simple sets to the different variation of catches. Uh, I'm amazed by Timo. This uh, battle catch at this level is wow. It's really surprising me. I'm really happy that the players are really going for it and they are not afraid. And that's great because I think this type of tournament is exactly for this. Show it what you got and then go for it. You will build your confidence and you will hit it next time. Just keep trying. Perfect. All right. So with that, we're jumping into the quarterfinals. Tim Rohrer versus Andres Figueroa. It's a three-point battle, ladies and gentlemen. Tim Rohrer will play first, kicking it over to burn Switzerland. Ryan, let's give him some music. Oh yeah, huge moves from Tim. This guy absolutely shreds. I think the pairs team of Timo and Tim could like win the 2023 World Championships. Like, these guys are such shredders. Unbelievable play here. So confident and he hits everything. Yeah, and one smart thing he did, which at least in my book, based on the FPA judging system should work, is because he did a lot of his catches upside down at the beginning, those catches are still available in later rounds right side up. So that's really going to open up a lot of opportunities for him. And it was a really smart move. Good call out. All right. So moving over to Cuba, Andres, uh, es tu tiempo a jugar en esta segunda ronda batalla. Disco Volador Cuba. Buen camiseta, amigo. Música. after time it doesn't count but at least he didn't drop it kept it clean he puts a ton of pressure on the judges just his space is different he's outside he's able to like put it up higher and i felt a little more movement from andres so it's going to be really interesting to see how the judges see this one agreed i think what you said is a big key of it is the movement and fluidity i think that's going to be a big role but it is really hard because just move for move, Tim might have had more, but it was also because of the nature of the combos he did. He just did a lot of quick catches, which let him pack in that content. So it's really just about what the judges value, but it's going to be hard. And I just want to point out that one competitor is, I don't know, under 15 and another one is, you know, over 30. And that doesn't matter for the judges at all. Andres but is it not that, like that should, you should think about that as an audience, how impressive it is that this young kid is up here battling adults and, holding his own <laughs> true that true that i think andres is like 25 to be <laughs> i have no idea i can't tell but all right let's kick this one over to the judges for the result of the first point it was a really tough decision but andres gets the first point andres figuora takes the point you have a 1-0 advantage y andres uh, es tu tiempo a jugar en el segundo punto. Vamos. Oh my God! He goes for the backflip catch. Just for going for that, I'm giving massive props and points. One of the most exciting ideas and attempts we've ever seen in this format. Humongous props to you, bro. That was incredible. Just slips out of his hand. On concrete. That is terrifying. I think I'm going to call him the backbreaker. That's incredible showing. And wow, no words. But he did drop it. He leaves the point open. He's got the advantage. But Tim, you've got a great coach. I know how smart you are. Be strategic. Do what it takes to force a third point. Let's see what you got. I can't believe it. 
just didn't work out for him this time. It still might be enough. Listen, both guys dropped it. I didn't think Andres' first parts of his combo were as impressive as his first combo. Tim shows us this. We've seen this in a previous battle, but it was a great combo. Upside down, huge spin. He gets the elbow tip. Unfortunately, there's like two drops in it. Dude, no. Yeah, I think what separates the great players from the superstars is flexibility. And I have a feeling that Tim had planned all three of his combos for this battle and stuck with that plan. And it might have been a smarter move to have done an audible to something that he felt a little bit more comfortable with. I think when you have the advantage, there's really no reason to go upside down like that because you really just need to stay in your comfort zone, hit what you know, rely on the comfort of having that rim as a backup when the disc is right side up. But respect him for going for the upside down. It didn't quite work out as a combo, but that doesn't mean it didn't work out with the judges. So let's find out what they have to say. True that. Let's kick it over to Edo Turi for the result of the second point. Good try from Tim with the upside down combo, but Andres gets the point. Andres Figueroa with the backflip takes the point, moving on to the semifinals. Congratulations, Andres and Tim. And uh, we can't wait to see you come back, dude. You're shredding. All right, moving on. Karsik Shai versus Laurent Isler. Karsik Shai back to Hong Kong. Who knows what time of night it is over there, but he's ready to play. It's your turn, bro. Let's give him some music. Wow, great stuff here from Karsik. I couldn't believe he was able to get to that kick tip. It looked like it went so far away from him. Somehow is able to keep it clean throughout. Uh, you know, slight wobble bobble. I could pick it apart if I wanted to, but this is a great combo. Yeah, he reeled it in. I think some of the troubles he had was because he's in a tiny room and he's trying to keep it a little bit closer and a little bit lower because he doesn't want to hit the ceiling or the walls. But he kept it in, kept it going, got a really great catch. Yeah, I like the way he extends that other arm as he's going down for that flamingo. Just nice form and, and great confident play here from Karsik. All right, so kicking it over to France, Lauren Isler in this battle. First point, you're up. Good moves there. He doesn't get to the behind the head. Um, and at this stage in the game, and we heard it from Timic, you know, execution is king. Like, you can't be expecting to win a battle if the other guy executes and you don't. So, you know, just unfortunate drop there at the end uh, from Lauren. See, that's interesting. I totally agree with you in principle. And obviously, I'm a little biased because I picked Lauren as my dark horse. But I actually thought what he did before the drop was so good that it, at least has an argument to win the point. I'm not saying it should or it does, or the judges will agree with me, but it was so clean. I actually think it was cleaner than a lot of the other combos we saw from him before. And there is a kind of advantage that if you're going to have a drop, if it's a drop on the last thing you do, that's obviously much better than if it happens in the middle or the beginning. So the judges could go either way, but I understand and agree that execution is king, especially when we're talking about one move. One move, one drop, that's a big deal. Good points, good points. All right, let's kick this over to Edo for the result of the first point. So I feel like Karsig is not dropping because he cannot wake up the neighbors, but <laughs> and not because of the competition. But that works and he gets the point. <laughs> Karsig Shai takes the point. So Karsik, you now play first in the second point. You win it here, you get to the semis. Let's see what you got. Oh, yeah, gets the bad attitude at same Olivia style. It's a low one. He doesn't get the leg that high, but somehow it doesn't look like he should have space to get under there and catch it. It's a really cool form and a great catch, great period on an overall outstanding combo. 
Yeah, to me, I think this is the best combo he's done today. It was certainly the cleanest and the most consecutive. He strung his moves together a lot better. And I really like what he's doing with the bad attitude. I think if you're having trouble getting that super high Suzanne straight bad attitude, you have to find another way to make it aesthetically pleasing. And I don't know exactly how he's doing it, but it's working. It's a really beautiful combo and a really beautiful catch. All right. So moving back to Lauren Isler, uh, this is the second point and you are up. Oh man, there's just this heartbreak when you're the second man up, you and you know the other guy already played clean, and then you drop it, and it's like you, it's just like this sinking feeling of I know it's over, and like you, should I pick it up? Should I try again? And you know, it, it ultimately it, it didn't happen for Lawrence this time. It happens to all of us. I'm glad he tried to hit it again, just for the respect factor. See if he could get it on the board. Didn't work out, but like I said, happens to all of us. Good try. Kicking it over to Edo for the confirmation, basically. Who won this point? Karsik gets the point. So Karsik Shy advancing to the semifinals. But Laurent, great playing, bro. Way to win your first round matchup. Uh, and as always, we love to see you play. Uh, but James's dark horse dreams have been dashed. I'm so out. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, James. No, I'm not that. Then, but it means I'm not going to win the battle pass, which means you can and you can win the nails. True that. True that. So another shout out. Get into the ifdc.tv. Fill out your battle pass at home. Um, you know, every round you need to make your picks. So we're going now to the battle of Timo Zimmerman versus Michael James. Timo will play first. So back over to Bern, Switzerland. Timo Zimmerman, you are up. Oh, wow. Tough luck there from Timo, but like you said, this happens to everyone. If it's gonna happen to you, at least it happens in the first point. He's left the door wide open, obviously, for Michael James, but just to call out a couple of good things that I like, he throws more spin than any other competitor in this field, for sure. Um, and so I'm confident that, you know, even if he doesn't win this point, he's gonna make a comeback. Agreed, but as we just saw, even when the door can be left open, sometimes it just doesn't happen with the follow through. So let's see what Michael James brings to the table. True that. So Michael James, this is the first point. You are up. Let's see what you got. Longest that he keeps it off the ground. Not sure how he did that. Um, but you know, I think it's gonna be enough. I mean, obviously, Timo is just of a higher skill level, but you have to judge what you see in that 10 seconds. And like, you know, that to keep it off the ground there, and then again there. I know that these are just saves, but well, it's tough though, because Timo, I, I don't know. How do you see it? I agree. It's really hard. I, I think what's odd is that what Timo did, he showed his skill kind of between the moves, just like the fact that he could set it and that he could take it and in some ways demonstrated more skills just from that. But it didn't really hit the move part of things. And Michael James got the roll. But I think like if you were just going move for move, I think Timo did hit the turnover. And maybe that turnover by itself kind of at least equalizes the roll. But then you have the execution factor. So this is a really tricky one. And I'm glad I'm not judging. All right. Over to Edo Turi for the result of the first point. Yeah, what Michael did was enough, and he gets the first point. So Michael James takes the first point, and you are now up first, Michael, in the second point. So back over to Abuja, Nigeria. Michael James, you are up.
doesn't get everything he wants and he goes over the time just a little bit but he did show a lot of cool skills first of all it was counter when he throws it at first but this was a very seamless transition to the clock brushing that i really appreciated yeah i really like his ability to recover even when he makes mistakes he doesn't really let it affect the combo because i think objectively he had two or three execution errors but it certainly didn't feel that way because he just kept it moving and kept it going the other thing that the judges should keep in mind is there was a little bit of repetition in terms of doing the under the leg catch again and the rolls again but you know the door's open we'll see what happens but he still crammed so much content into that block and just like i said kept it going kept it smooth and could be enough but we'll find out as the first one who goes, your number one job is keep the disc off the ground and at least put pressure on the, the competitor. And he did that. Let's kick it over to Bern, Switzerland, Timo Zimmerman here in the second point. Wow, humongous classic combo here from Tim uh, Timo Zimmerman. Excuse me, amazing playing. The spinning chair catch uh, was one of the highlights of the day for me. That's just true confidence. Like this gentleman is ready to play in the pro division, no doubt. He's almost spinning off of one leg when he does his spins. It's really cool. Like he does, he does get his other leg in there, but he has this very cool momentum-based way of spinning that makes it super exciting. I, I think it's really great. Well, this combo is a no-brainer from my book. Let's kick it over to the judges, though, to see who won the second point. Yeah, the cleanness of the combo by Tim gets him the point. So Timo Zimmerman ties it up one to one. It's the third point of this battle. As you said, James, we don't want to see repetition. We want new moves. Um, Timo, you have to play first. Be strategic. This is it. This is the third and final point of the battle. Let's give him some music. God, and he gets the spinning barrel, perfectly clean combo. Probably would have jumped out of my seat if I didn't already expect this from watching his earlier combos. This was unbelievable. This is this is a A-level pro freestyle combo. Agree. And I think he even got a little cleaner and more fluid than we saw before. He's putting the moves together a little bit faster. And it's really hard to keep your cool like that when you lose the first battle. But he won the second one and just put a lot of pressure down for the third. So, Michael James, the bar is set high, but I believe in you. Let's see if you can do it. The third and final point is yours. Great stuff there for Michael. And this gentleman kept the disc off the ground, all three points. That's just fantastic play from Michael. I don't know if it's going to be enough. I doubt it. But regardless, he should feel incredible about the performance he put out there. Uh, really, really well played from Michael James. Yeah, he did almost like a hybrid bad attitude Olivia. I don't totally know how his legs and arms are intersecting there. It's pretty cool to see, and I'm going to have to study that later to find out exactly what he did. <laughs> okay, kicking it over to Ed Oturi for the result of the third and final point. Yeah, Timo gets the last point and wins the bottle. So Timo Zimmerman advancing to the semifinals. And now moving on to the last quarterfinal matchup, Peter Dinan versus Walter Dunbar. Peter will play first. So kicking it straight back to Abuja, Peter Denon, you are up. Let's give him some music.
Wow, amazing move there from Peter. He knew exactly what 10 second was and he filled it. He goes for the X disc, but immediately flips it on its head, literally, and does some insanely hard, you know, in what do you call that? Like a skid out on the palm, shows this bolt, rolls on both sides, and ends it with the flamingo. Great move here from Peter and putting a lot of pressure on Walter. Yeah, incredible. He's definitely one of my favorite players. He's so fun to watch. I like him going to his roots with the X-Dis. I think that was a smart move. He's in the challenger division. It's a higher division, but he wants to stay in his comfort zone. And even though he used the X-Disc, which maybe dings you a little more in the challenger division than in the junior division, he still pulled out true freestyle moves at the end that the fact that it was an X-Disc didn't matter. He showed those quick catches. He showed the flamingo and just really great showing from him. Man, I don't think I'm a thing for using the X-Disc. It's, it's a, like you said, like the other guy had the, Walter had the padiddle disc. And the and the the delay disc. This is no different. He brought a different disc, showed difficult skills with it. I give extra points for that. But regardless, heading over to Walter Dunbar for the response. First point of the battle. Let's give him some music. Oh my gosh, we just went deeply into Bizarro World. I'm trying to find my way out of the rabbit hole. That was amazing and really, really, really freaking weird and awesome. But he did drop it at the end. As Dougie Fresh would say, this was Jude the Obscure, Hardy-esque, very bizarre stuff. Even when I thought I couldn't get any weirder, he took that first fiddle move and went under the leg in some kind of weird flared amphibian just Double black seven, hole something i don't know it was really weird but amazing move i love to see those different styles coming to play points for surprising the judges no doubt uh this is a difficult one let's kick it over to edo to see who won this first point yeah tough decision but walter gets the point Woo! walter <laughs> dunbar takes the point after clean play from Peter, uh, amazing. All right, so Walter, you are up first here in the second point. Guy gets the guidance. The hand flip is after time and the roll. We're not counting those. Great play here. He did have one drop. Con correct me if I'm wrong, James. Like just a true point three kind of style drop. Um, but nice uh, double leg over, I think, on this one. He goes for the other side and drops it. Yeah. But still a lot of skill showed and a big flying guidance. So uh, pressure's on. Yeah, I agreed. It was an unfortunate drop. I almost would have stopped after the first double leg over because it was so clean and really could get you pretty far in the challenger division, but he went for it, respect that, and we'll see what uh, Peter Dinon can pull out now. All right, Peter, pressure's on. You're up in this second point. Let's give him some music. Yeah, bro, awesome move. And it, well, again, I got to say, all that last stuff, the last three elements we saw were after time. Um, but regardless, you know, he he surprised us. You know, I, I didn't even really fully understand there was two discs in there until he started. And he just moved with a lot of pace. He had a story to it. He did something different. He took a risk. He showed something new. So much great stuff to say about that combo from Peter. Yeah, that was great. I, I wish he had put the roll into the 10 seconds because I think that would have been a big factor. I still think he definitely could win it. It's, again, two really different combos, and I'm not sure how the judges are going to compare them. So kicking it over to Edo Turi for the result of the second point. Yeah, I loved uh, Peter's uh, confidence in this combo, and he gets the point. So Peter Denon ties it up. One-to-one, one, ladies and gentlemen. P 
Peter Denon from Nigeria. You are up first in this third and final point. Take a breath. Take a breath. You're up. Right at the end, I'm not going to worry about the throwback in, but he did great stuff at the beginning of the combo, like the brushing, the roll, that stuff that unfortunately didn't make it in the 10 seconds last time is then available here in the third point, and he takes advantage of that, catches a beautiful flamingo, a lot of pace, but dang, that's going to hurt him that he dropped that, that last catch. Agreed. I definitely give him the role there, but I think a lot of the other stuff he did, we saw in his prior points, like the flamingo and then the legs. And the brushes, he was kind of doing more of one-handed brushes before. And this time it was more of two-handed brushes, which were a little more controlled. But he might have even done a two-handed brush before. It's like repetition might hurt him here a little bit. But that's also kind of what you expect when a less experienced player overperforms and gets this far in the competition. It becomes harder and harder to keep bringing out the new moves. But it's only because you got this far because you were playing so incredibly well. So, Walter, you know what you need to do here to win it and take it home and pass on to the semifinal. Let's see if you can do it here in this third and final point. Very interesting. That Guidus is definitely after time. Uh, the, the, the one he dropped might have been after time even, but he he did drop it. He also had like one that he kind of just like caught off his leg right there. Um, but still he showed in some ways more than Peter. This is a tough call. This is tricky because it's almost a technical decision. It kind of comes down to how you view the rules and the rules about repetition specifically. So I think maybe I would give it to Peter if everything he did was fresh because I thought it was exciting and really nice flamingo and just catches alone were stronger. But once I factor in the fact that most of that was repetitive, I maybe would give it to Walter instead. But I could see either way because that definitely wasn't Walter's best combo or the combo he was happiest with today. So it just comes to how down to how the judges view it. Yeah. Tough. They both had execution errors. They both showed great skills. Um, let's kick it over to Edo for the result of this third and final point. Yeah, it really is a tough decision. But as James said, uh, there's re repetition in Peter's game. So we're going to go with uh, Walter. So Walter Dunbar takes the win, keeps the American dream alive, and advances to the semifinals. Great playing, Peter. We can't wait to see you in a future competition. So come back next year um, and you could win it all, buddy. You're doing great. So uh, let's advance Timo over Michael uh, in that second semifinal position. So we, here we are. It's the semifinals. Head on over to ifdc.tv to make your selections, ladies and gentlemen. And let's go ahead and continue with the matchup of Andres Figuera versus Karsik Shai. Three-point matchup. Andres plays first. Kuba, uh, you are up. Let's turn it over to Andres. Sorry. Um, so just by the way, how are you, how are your battle uh pass? How is your battle pass, James? I think it's going okay. It's a little bit hard to tell sometimes. Uh, but going forward, I feel pretty good with my picks. I think I'm picking Andres to win the next battle. And it looks like me and everybody else is picking Timo to make it to the finals. <laughs> yeah, I am I actually picked Karsik in this battle. But uh, Andres, es uh, tu tiempo a jugar. Es el primer punto. Vamos a poner música y vamos. Uh, the scarecrow safely under the 10 second mark 
there's just a little bit of uh you know internet uh it's like kind of tough to like catch everything in real time just because of the internet right there was a little challenge but this was a great combo a lot of skills shown uh as we'd expect from andres just a great pace of play and dynamism yeah i would guess he caught the one in the middle based on how quickly he was back into the next move and i mean just like we said with walter before just having a double leg over in the challenger division is pretty impressive and his was really clean very fluid very fast and I think he's clearly one of the strongest competitors we've seen today. So kicking it over to Hong Kong, Karsik Shai in the first point. <laughs> Great move here from Karsik. That looked like a new disc as well. And I like his whole like, his whole uh the way he like presented himself he's got the all black with the black disc uh goes for the elbow tip the tip under the leg you know just some great skills i i think you call is that the keys to the highway set there or no yeah yeah kind of definitely keys to the highway ask and I really love the slick blast black disc love the calm nonchalant way that he plays it's just very relaxed and i was just thinking in my head the whole time watching this how exciting this would be as a team, Andres and Karsik, just two young, fired up freestylers living in kind of newer freestyle countries. And I would just love to see them play together at some point. Totally. So this is a tough decision. Great play from both. Uh, let's kick it over to Edo for the decision of the first point. Yeah, more content and more flow and Andres gets the point. Andres Figueroa takes the point. Andres, necesitas jugar primer en ese segundo punto. Es tu turno. Música, por favor. Oh, yeah. Gets the Flamingo just under time. Oh, why did we have to see that? Cut away sooner, Ryan. <laughs> but great, great play there um, from Andres. He showed a lot of great skills. I just like the way he jumps. This dude jumps in the air. That is worth a lot of points. Yes, he's very springy. He's got the Claudio Chinia Gumby spring legs going. And it also kind of reminded me of the just classic famous New York freestyler pie, just the way he kind of used his legs when he jumped up for that kind of barrel under the leg kind of catch. Really cool, big style points for me. All right, so kicking it back to Karsik Shai, you know what you need to do to force a third point. And that might be the end of Carson Shai's dreams. First of all, we saw the keys to the highway to the behind the back. So there's some repetition there. I know he's so consistent usually with that outside heel tip. I'm devastated that he dropped that. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe the nerves got to him because he kind of delayed it a little bit longer than I think he meant to before he went for that. So Maybe he felt like he didn't quite have control, but also knew he needed to get it within time. And so it was kind of both too slow and too fast and it didn't work for him this time. All right. So, uh, so where are we? I need to go back to the judges, right? Yes. All right. Thanks. So Edo, who won this, this point? Yeah, nice try on the key, on the heel tip. It was really nice, but unfortunately, Andres gets the point. Congratulations. So, Andres Figuera, your first finalist from Cuba. Cuba wow. en el final es increíble. I'm so excited. Cuba has passed to the final. Andres, amazing playing. And uh, Karsik, dude, keep coming back. Keep playing, dude. Hong Kong could be the next, uh, you know, the first really Asian epicenter, East Asian. There's Japan, but man, I want to come visit you in Hong Kong. Like, that's a promise I'm making. I'm going to get there sometime soon. 
Uh, I want to visit you guys. You're playing amazing. Great job. Andres in the finals. Let's kick it over to the other semifinal matchup to see who he'll take on. It's Timo Zimmerman versus Walter Dunbar. Switzerland versus the United States of America. Timo plays first. Let's go over to the gym, burn Switzerland, and give my man some music. Great stuff. Good audibling there from Timo. Somehow keeps it off the ground, knows he's short on time, but gets the big stomping guidance catch to seal it up. This is veteran maneuvers. Yeah, really smart. I think even if it had been right side up, this would have been a really good combo. Incredible save off that double leg over miss that easily could have just gone flying on the ground and rolling away, but he reeled it in. And like I said before with another Swiss player, I think the fact that he did it upside down now opens the door to doing some of those elements later, like the double leg over, or the under the leg set or the spinning under leg pull. So I think that's going to be really smart because he might need those moves later. So Walter Dunbar, you are up in this first point of the semifinals. Creativity, the bed somersault is unfortunately after time. And I think that's the challenge with the padiddle based moves is that it's kind of a slow grind to get through them. Um, but, you know, great, unique skill sets and moves here. Switzerland's used to having to like go up X disc versus, you know, styler, traditional freestyler. And here again, there's two very different styles at play. It'll be interesting to see. Well, I'll have to go back and review that later. That might have been the first ever staycation, a move we haven't seen yet before, but going for the staycation, really, really cool. But like you said, went a little bit over the time, so he's not going to get the credit for that. All right, over to Ed Oturi for the result of this first point. So Timo Zimmerman, true? All right, Timo yeah, Zimmerman exactly. gets the point. So, Timo, you are up 1-0 in the semifinal matchup. You play first in the second point. What was that? Ladies and gentlemen, it's all over. We can announce the winner now. He gets the double spinning pull. He gets the guidance pull. And then look at this crazy. Oh my God. The crowd. Unbelievable. Oh my gosh. That was insane. I don't know if we've ever seen a double in the challenger division. We don't even see very many doubles in the pro division. And that guy Tosis was huge. And actually the one thing I criticized him for before earlier was keeping it too close to his body, making his sets low. But he set that guy Tosis way up in the air, flew his body around with such confidence and crushed it. I mean, what? I mean, just to go for that was incredible. Best combo hands ever. Down that I've ever seen in the virtual event series. Walter, I have no idea what you could ever hope to do to come up and try to challenge that. <laughs> but good luck, my friend. I'm not envious. Uh, let's give him some music. Nice chest roll. Nice playing, Walter. I love that you kept it within your zone. You know, just took a breath and a smile and played your game. 
one drop there. Either way, it wasn't going to be enough. Um, but, dude, you made your comeback statement, no doubt. You are a great freestyle, Walter. We're so glad to have you back in the sport, and I can't wait to see you play in future competitions. Uh, let's kick this over to Ed Oturi for the result of this point. <laughs> Amazing, unbelievable. Oh, gosh. Sorry, give us your thoughts. Put it into words if you can. Like, what does to say? Like, he's ready. He's ready for the World Championship. He's ready for the next division. And it was such high-level skills. And, yeah. We're so, Timo advancing to the finals unbelievable play dude you made it we made it we are here it's 159 just stay with us for about 15 more minutes we're in the finals the challenger finals here at the indie freestyle disc championships head over to ifdc.tv to make your selections pick your winners the winner of the tournament and the winner of who picked the bracket the closest uh, is ultimately going to win 25 nails from the spin factory. So a lot at stake here, but we made it to the finals. And now, how do you even get to the, how do you do that though? Oh, okay. I see. I see where it is. Okay, cool. So we made it to the finals. It is going to be Andres Figuera versus Timo Zimmerman. Let's do it. I think we're ready. Up first is like how like how do you move on to that? Do, can you get all the way over to the right to where it's just two James? No, the, he's showing the finals and the consolation match, but we're not doing a consolation oh, match. It's right, just right. the finals. Right, right, right. So just the finals. This top bracket: Andres versus Timo. Make your selection, Andres. You will play first. This is a best two out of three matchup, just like the other ones, okay? Two out of three, Andres, necesitas jugar primer, es el final, Andres, eso es el final, tú necesitas jugar primer, vamos. At the time, unfortunate drop in the middle of the sequence, uh, which really opens the door for Timo to employ some strategy here. But, you know, as we would expect, you know, nice movement and nice style from Andres, really dynamic. Um, too bad about that one drop. Yeah, I like this matchup because I think both players can learn a lot from each other. I think Timo could really benefit from having the fluidity of Andres. And I think Andres could benefit from having the cleanliness of Timo. Now, one strategic error I think Andres made there is I almost would have left the Scarecrow because I would have wanted to save that for a later battle, kind of realizing that I probably hadn't done enough to really make a stake on the first battle point and just let that go to save the Scarecrow for later. But maybe I'm wrong and maybe Timo will have a bad round too. So we'll see what happens. I disagree. It's the finals. There's only three points. You have to do everything you can to put as much pressure on and getting that Scarecrow in the time is ultimately, you know, if Timo does drop it now, it's really going to make the judges have to question because uh, he did at least get some hard content in there. So let's kick it over to Timo. You play in this first point. Let's see what you got. Wow. wow. Great combo there from Timo. He gets the indigenous pull, which is the first time we've seen that today, and then shows us once again that spinning chair two for two. Uh, just great, great championship mentality play from Timo. This was so close to disaster at the very beginning. He <laughs> almost just kicked that disc on the ground. It would have spun away. 
But there is one advantage to be a younger competitor, which is a reaction time. So his brain is moving so much faster than ours. He saved that in, no problem. Still had everything he needed to finish his combo. And I think it's going to pay off. So Ed Oturi, please let us know the result of this first point here in the finals. Timo gets the first point. So Timo Zimmerman takes the point and the advantage. My heart's pounding. Timo, yours probably is too, buddy. You can win it all right here. If you can win this point, you are up first. We want new moves. Let's see what you got and give him some music. Oh, my God, he's done it again. Two for two, the exact same combo. I just need to make sure that they didn't film that and then, like, bring it back in. They're unbelievable from Timo. How does he do this? Two times in a row, the double spinning pull, the guidest pull, and then the humongous plumbing guitosis off the ground. It's so crazy because the first time he did it, it seemed like that, you know, one in a hundred, everything worked out. He looked so fired up, but then he just does it perfectly the second time. And I sometimes have to, I sometimes think there's moves that are adrenaline based. Like maybe he does hit that one out of a hundred times, but he's a competitor and the competition elevates his game, makes him a better player. And he can hit that every time in competition because so far he's two for two on the best combo we've ever seen at least in the challenger division, if not the pro division. Unbelievable. Really throws down the gauntlet and puts a tremendous amount of pressure on Andres. Andres necesitas lo que neces lo que... What am I trying to say? You know what you need to do, bro. <laughs> Go get it done. Give him some music. Love that he went for it. He knows how much it excited us the first time. He knew he needed something huge. And especially after he dropped it at the beginning of that combo, I would have liked to see Andres know that the one and only important thing about his combo was that back flip to have a chance. And for him to just breathe and put that like right at the beginning of his combo, so to speak, and really just focus on executing that and that alone. Uh, might have served him a little better, uh, just given the stakes of the moment. I agree. I think he should have done it first. He also would have avoided the risk of going over time. And if he had hit it, then he could have taken that deep breath and filled the rest of the time with things that were within his comfort zone. Instead, I imagine he was a little bit breathless trying to get that incredibly difficult move at the end. But one thing he did that I think was smart, that was an improvement from his last attempt, was he positioned himself in the camera in a way that gave us the best possible view of the backflip. You could really see the air he got and the speed of the spin. Really great attempt. I'm glad he went for it knowing what Timo hit, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Regardless, fantastic play from Cuba and Andres Figueroa. You should be so proud. You made it all the way to the finals, dude. Let's kick this one over to Eduardo Turi, our head judge, for the result of this point. What a great show. Both players showed incredible play game and incredible style, but Timo is just on another level and he gets a point. So Timo takes home the point, the battle and the championship. Your new 2022 Indy Freestyle Disc Champion Timo Zimmerman from Switzerland. Congratulations, you are the champion. Unbelievable play. James, what do you have to say? Wow, like father, like son, we have a new champion really playing at such an elite level. I think it's time for him to go up the, to the pro division. He's playing like a pro. He's looking like a pro. I can't wait to jam with him. He's a player after my own heart. He's got all the fundamentals. 
He was so clean this whole time. He's the only competitor pulling out doubles. He's the only competitor pulling out Gaitosis's only competitor doing Gaitis pulls. I mean, the number of things that he and he alone did just tells you why he's the champion. So much content, so much skill on display from everybody. Just want to say thank you once again to all of our competitors for tuning in from around the world at whatever crazy random times. Thank you so much for being here with us. Congratulations. Let's give the spotlight, please, to Timo Zimmerman. Timo, raise your hands, dude. You are the champion. Congratulations. Awesome, awesome play. Uh, if you guys want, you could take the mic off for just a second. Just give us a couple words. Um, you're the man. Yeah, thank you so much. It's unbelievable. <laughs> um, Great win, dude. Yeah. You earned it. Big shout out to all players. You all played so well. Thanks so much. Awesome job, buddy. Congratulations. You got the nails, the trophy, the digital certificate, the title, and all of our love, respect, and admiration. Congratulations, Timo. Congratulations to everybody. Thank you to our judges. Thank you to our spectators, parents, friends, supporters, family. Thank you, James, for co-hosting. And of course, thank you to executive producer. Thank you all. And thank you, Daniel. You do so much work to put this together, rallying the troops, getting the headshots, making sure everyone's here on time. It makes all the difference in the world. And we all really appreciate you. Love you, buddy. So happy to do this with you and looking forward to our next installation in 2023. So just to look out for that, that'll be a year from now, December 2023, the, the next edition of the Indie Freestyle Disc Championship. It's likely to include pro and women's. So Timo, we'll look to see you in the pro division next year. Um, and we'll look to see you all uh, stepping up to compete as this tournament gets more competitive uh, and, and higher stakes. So with that, uh, congratulations once again to Alma Kusma, your junior champion, and to Timo Zimmerman, your challenger champion. I'm Daniel O'Neill with James Wise, my co-host. We are signing off. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next year.